This one's for developers only. Uh, you might wonder why Rackspace does certain things, why we acquire companies. Well, we have Airbrake, which we acquired back in uh, April, and they are helping us set up for the age of context where you're gonna have a huge amount of fragmentation on uh, client devices. I mean, that, I met somebody who has 4,000 different Android devices on their test suite. That gives you an idea of how fragmented the world is out there. And how do you test for everything? You can't catch it all. So these guys uh, put some code in uh, your app, and if something breaks, they air break it. And we're going to hear about what that means right now. Great. Who are you? So I'm Justin Mares. I'm marketing manager at Rackspace and previously was part of the Exceptional Cloud Services, which is the team behind Airbrake yeah. uh, when we got acquired. Very cool. So uh, why, did, why, did, why did you guys develop Airbrake? So we developed Airbrake. Our founder had run four successful companies at that point. And so he has a bunch of experience with seeing what's, what goes wrong with apps. He's run and built multiple apps. He built a Rails consultancy at one point. And so he just saw that getting insight into what was actually breaking in your application was a major problem. And there were no good tools out there solving it. I mean, developers are spending lots of time sifting through log files and going through emails. It just, you know, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. So why isn't this caught in the development process or in the building of the test suites or the, the test patterns that you're going to build into your code? Why, why, isn't, why, why does breaking happen, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it happens for a bunch of reasons. It could be a bad deploy, like you deploy one bug fix quickly and you don't run it through the whole series of test suites, which you know, takes a couple hours. Um, and then that incidentally breaks something else in the app. It could be a poor integration, an API issue, or it could be an issue among like what we're seeing a lot now is with so many devices, mobile, tablet, you know, different browsers, everything that you have to build the same application for. There's a lot of issues in terms of compatibility on one browser, one device versus another. Yeah, this is running Android 404. Your new uh, Nexus phone will run 4.2.4, you know, uh, right? You know, a lot better, uh, a lot newer Android. Yeah. And everybody has different kinds of screens, sizes, and resolutions, and different apps running in the background. So yeah, yeah. you can't catch it all, can you? Yeah, exactly. So what, what happens when something breaks and, and a user you know, gets a stupid error message or, uh, or the app goes away? What, what, what does, your, what does uh, Airbrake do? So the user gets angry or whatever, you know, <laughs> and then our app actually catches that error, sends a detailed email to the developer within five, minute, or five seconds of it breaking, and then it breaks down, like, this is what was happening when the user was using it, this is the environment, parameters that broke, and then it gives you a detailed stack trace that says this is the what happened when it broke, and this is like the line of code that was responsible, the deploy it was tied to, that type of stuff. To make this work, what do I have to do to my code to make to make Airbrake work? So you just install like for Ruby. So we have a Ruby gem that's been downloaded 1.8 million times at this point. Mm -hmm. So you just install that gem, and then we start monitoring your app. Media. Now that's on client side. Do you have Java and uh, Objective C gems yeah. as well? Yeah, we do. So we don't have gems for those, but we have notifiers that take advantage of our gem. Okay. And does it watch anything on the server side? Because something might have gone wank wanky on the server side, which is different than uh, yeah. a client side app. Right? Yeah, it does. So I mean, we can't do as deep inf information in the server because that you know requires an entirely different type of deployment. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is say that this is most likely a server issue. And so if something is breaking, it could be just like a request timed out. We can tell you and give you more information about that. And you can pretty generally see, like pretty easily see that it was a server issue. This is the server that it was tied to. And we do give you that information. What kind of er errors does it catch? What, give me some ideas of what kinds of things it would catch in an app. Yeah, so I mean, pretty much everything, to be honest. So you know, all the standard like 404, the 400, the 500 type errors. Uh, and then in addition, we also track and catch things when your application isn't functioning it the way it should. Yeah. You know, so someone's having a login issue or another issue that's not necessarily server related or browser related, but it's more app related, we catch all of those. Yeah. And so um, do you mind if I give you an example? Yeah. So one thing we saw, one of our customers, Sticker Mule, had a, an issue where for some small percentage of their customers, they would go through the checkout process, hit an error, and then just be like bounced from the page. 
So that obviously sucked for Sticker Mule because they're losing business. Yep. And so they instrumented us because we actually were going to buy stickers from them, got that error, and then just said, like, hey, you should use us, you know? Um, so they instrumented us and they saw their conversion rates went up after they fixed this error because it was something that was happening in a tiny edge case, but they didn't, under, they didn't know, they didn't, weren't able to address it just because they weren't aware. Yep. You know? So that's the type of insight that we provide. Very cool. So okay. it helps make it make your app more reliable, which doesn't piss off users and yeah. helps uh, not <laughs> kill you right when yeah, you're about exactly. to pay money <laughs> to your company, right? Exactly. Great. Um, this works on all clouds, uh, Amazon and Rackspace Cloud, it does, yeah. Azure, that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope, hopefully nobody uses those other clouds, but <laughs> we, we know developers do. Um, is there any advantage to using it with Rackspace Cloud? Are you building deeper integrations now? Yeah, so right now there isn't. I mean, we were just acquired recently, just yeah. released a new eye and a major update to the product last week, actually. But what we're working on is working towards integration with Rackspace server information, uh, like the intel that you can get on your Rackspace servers. We're working on a great integration with monitoring as a service, so mm -hmm. formerly CloudKick, okay. which should be really cool, because then you can get not only application monitoring, but also server monitoring, and that whole package, you'll have the most incredible level of insight into how your app is performing on an app and server level. Yeah, this isn't a replacement for other monitoring systems like New Relic or whatnot, no, right? Not at all, so New Relic is performance monitoring. Like, what is causing this page load time to spike, you know, or what's going on in my app performance-wise, and that's often related to servers, databases, you know, other issues like that, and that's more load time performance specific. Ours is more app specific, where it's what broke, what information do I need to quickly fix it, and under what conditions did this error occur. Yeah, is there anything else I need to know? Actually, let's see what it, what it shows us, because I think that's uh, pretty interesting for developers. To see. Yeah, sure, so this is a test error uh, that I generated. You can do this if you sign up for an account. We have free plans if you want to play with it. But basically you can see, so this is one error. And you, so you can say like, what environment did this happen in? Um, so if you have different development environments, like you might have multiple products, stuff like that. You can filter out by environment. Um, and then you can see this error happened however many times. It's happened this many times since the last deploy. So one cool feature that we have is we integrate with a bunch of developer tools like GitHub, Jira, HipChat. And so let's say you push a fix, we can track that deploy and see like what errors it resolved and if a certain error that's happening again actually was fixed by deploy. Very cool. So like you push something and let's say this number is 10, you know that your most recent deploy didn't actually fix whatever error you were trying to address. Cool. You know, which obviously Do, is useful. You know, if, if hundreds of errors are coming in because you have a big, big system and, and millions of users, uh, does it prioritize those errors so you know which one to work on first, which one's the most important, which yeah. one's causing the most pain, I guess? Yeah, yeah, it does. So you can see, you can sort by error count, so you know, whatever errors are happening the most. You can also sort by environment, like I talked about earlier, or you can also see like what errors are affecting the largest number of users, yeah. or what errors are causing uh, a break in my environment, and you can just see like, okay, these are the ones that we need to fix, like ASAP. Very, very cool. Is there something that you're learning about people's code that they should do more of that they're not doing when they're building apps? Or is there architectural choices that they should be making to maybe make these systems work better and have fewer errors in the first place? Yeah, so one thing we're seeing a lot is issues with integrations. I mean, so you'll see even WordPress users, which is a segment that we're growing pretty rapidly among, is there are a lot of issues with just outdated plugins, outdated versions of WordPress, people not upgrading, like all these different things and those are causing a lot of compatibility problems where you just have you know, 20 plugins or something on a, the newest version of WordPress, yeah. like stuff just breaks. And so we, yeah. so that's one major thing that we're seeing. People don't like uh, updating, do they? <laughs> no. I, I know no. I, I go to my WordPress and every week I make sure I, I check to make sure there's no yeah. updates to be done and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Exactly. And but I mean, it's really important for security and, f and for these integration problems, right? Sure. But I mean, you understand that. If you're running a startup and you have a blog that gets maybe an hour a week, like you're probably not trying to optimize plugin updates and WordPress updates and you know, all this other stuff, Very which cool. can lead to issues. Uh, where do we get this? Uh, where, where do you guys live on the web? Yeah, so check it out. It's airbreak.io. Uh, so like many of the developer tools companies, we're an IO company. Yeah. Um, yeah, check us out. You can sign up for a free plan, um, get a, go for a test run. 
or anyone can email me. It's justin at airbrake.io. I'm happy to like set up whoever. Very cool. Thanks to cool. thanks for what you're doing for Rackspace Cloud too. Yeah. So. Thanks.